Can you repeat that? Can you repeat that? Okay, I didn't know. Someone called so I can hear you. Um, when Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala um, comes down and said uh, we call uh, malaika, would uh, kuffar be able to see him? No. On the day of judgment, no one is able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, Akhi Yusuf? No one actually sees Allah on the day of judgment. They only hear him. The only time that we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in Jannah. We're going to talk about that tomorrow, inshallah. What about the sound? No? Speed. You know, speech. The sound. Oh, the sound. That Habibi, the Saq, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, وَاكْشِفُ رَبِّ عَنْ سَاقِ Allah will reveal his shin. This is something that we cannot interpret. We don't know exactly its reality. Is it Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala himself or it is a metaphor? Allahu A'lam. What we say is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Allah will reveal his shin. But seeing Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala means seeing, as the hadith says, seeing his face. And that wajah is also undescribable. This is what we are going to see in Jannah, inshallah. As for the self, its reality is only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But seeing Him subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself doesn't happen on the Day of Judgment. Because that's actually a reward. No. Um, I have another question. Um, it's not related to the and by the way, one thing about the shin, only the believers see that. And the hypocrites, but the hypocrites can't prostrate. Remember, the disbelievers have gone. It's not related to the topic. Should I ask now? Does anyone else have questions and answers? Questions, sorry. Sadis? Um, can you not use the microphone? Can I not use the microphone? People want to hear the question. Uh, uh, Sheikh, you said when a person dies and is resurrected, uh, their age will be around 30. Uh, I heard in a lecture that when a person dies, uh, he'll be resurrected. He'll be raised as as he died, as in if he dies like a shaheed, he'll, he'll be raised with the same wound. Yeah, that's different. The age is different to the manner that you are raised. Now, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ states that a person who dies uh, will be raised on the way that they died. That doesn't mean that every feature is the same. Because look at the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He says, you will be raised Hufat and Urah, and also another hadith I didn't mention before, the circumcised will no longer be circumcised. You know, so these features, you're not exactly the same features as you were created here. But the brother mentioned a shaheed will be raised with his blood still fresh and it will be smelling like, like musk. But these are exceptional circumstances. People like the shuhada, uh, there are also people who were. Uh, 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 there are certain good deeds which people have done, I've forgotten now which specific ones, and they'll be raised and it will still be with them. It'll be like, for example, the Quran. Those who have memorized the Quran and practiced it in their life, the Quran will also come up with them and it will accompany you. So, that, yes, there are different things that uh, specific people will be raised on the Day of Judgment and they still exist for them. But these are actually only there to be a witness for them to show everyone else what kind of deeds they actually died on. So, the age, and by the way, when I said the age, this is one tafsir, yani. no. not necessarily that it is, you know, all yeah. the scholars agree upon. This is one tafsir which was given about it. Uh, but definitely, the young and the old will all understand that. So, an infant, a baby who died on that day, will be raised to a form where he or she is able to understand and comprehend. Else? Yes, this is. Um, I thought that the could be the Are you talking about the shade? No. Well, I, I didn't hear that very I didn't hear all the questions. I'm sorry, sister. Mm. 
Yes. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yes. I didn't mention everything about the standing on the day. There's so much that we can. I mean, I can go on and on and on for a very long time. The brother is. The, the sister is saying that. Uh, uh, on the, she heard about a, a, a narration that your good deeds will cover you on the day of judgment. Yes, but initially, initially, every single person will be gathered naked. Rasul tells us that the first one who will be clothed on that day is the Prophet Muhammad So the believers will be clothed, and depending on their deeds, their deeds will cover them. Yes, with nur, with light. So on that day, Rasul Allah Subhanahu tells us in the Quran that there will be people who are full of nur and those who are full of darkness. You can see that on that day. And the nur is your deeds. This is what will be covering you, yes. So there are people who will be clothed, but only after they have been resurrected naked. So the hadith of Prophet is really true and it's authentic that everyone will be gathered this way. And then after, uh, special gifts are given. So shades are given, towers are given, flags of, of, of goodness are given, clothing is given. So even when you receive your book in your right hand, your whole features change immediately and you come out and the people who saw you before will say you've come out in a different form that we, than we saw you before. Your nur and your features are more beautiful than before. So transformations occur as the day of judgment proceeds. Yes. I hope that answers your question. What you said is correct. Now. Any more questions? Okay. You don't have to ask if you if you don't feel like it. <laughs> it's about the um, there's a hadith that says after every one thousand people, one person will be entered general. Is this only for the Muslims or for all mankind? It's the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that from every thousand, one will enter Jannah and nine hundred and ninety nine will enter hellfire. This is true out of all the people of the world. And one companion asked, Ya Rasulullah, or the companions, they got shocked about this. They said, Ya Rasulullah, then what are the chances of any of us entering heaven, entering Jannah then, if out of this amount? Our Rasul Sallallahu then replied by saying, For every one Muslim, there will be 999 from Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Ever of you, Gog and Magog? Ya'juj and Ma'juj. He said, SubhanAllah, the wisdom. Allah trapped Ya'juj and Ma'juj in a place all these centuries and their amount is more than all the population of the world and look at the wisdom on the day of judgment for every one Muslim that enters Jannah 999 in his place from Ya'juj and Ma'juj will enter hellfire so he answered that question inshallah and that's when the believers the companions got calm again Alhamdulillah but the, the reason mentioning that hadith is because the amount of people who who disbelieved in Allah and, and uh, went arrogant against Allah SWT, who deserve hellfire. It's, it's a shocking amount that that many people actually, after all the signs and everything, end up up in hellfire. Yes? So, okay, you know, there's ten major signs before the day of judgment. Is there any certain order that they come in? There is an order which the ten major signs come in, but we were not taught them. We were uh, not told in which specific order they were. We can only guess. But, uh, among, I can tell you among the beginning, among the, the first yeah. and among the last will be most likely among the first in order would be Imam al-Mahdi, the Dajjal, Isa alayhi salam. They will be among the first. Then among the middle will be Ajuj and Ma'juj. Allahu alam about the rising of the sun. It either can come early or late. <coughs> and then there's the beast which will come later. Dabbatul ard will come out of the ground. And the earth's swallowings, swallowings in three parts of the world. Lands will end up under the sea, gone, finished, vanished. This is also one of the major signs. I don't know if that's before or in the end. But certainly, the final sign is the blowing of the trumpet. That's the end sign. Are they Tim? I think so. The smoke as well, correct. There is smoke. Now, this we don't know in its order. So, the Ajuj and Ma'juj is somewhere in the middle. Allahu A'lam, from the way the hadiths go, the Ajuj and Ma'juj come after Isa alayhi salam. Because there are hadiths about Isa alayhi salam asking Allah to get rid of them after they die. Uh, no time to talk in detail about it, but yes. Sit, uh, 
question. Yeah, people say that the smoke has already happened. It's the volcano that <laughs> erupted, you know, the way the, the ash covered, you know, uh, and delayed all the flights and all that kind of thing. <laughs> 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 Allah. Uh, now you mean, <laughs> this one that's happening now. <laughs> Last year. <laughs> The ayah in the Quran says, and await when the sky will come with a very clear smoke, it will cover all the people. Like people won't be able to see anyone else. It will cover the people. Is that what happened with that smoke? No. Came down to earth or was just in the sky? Yes, yeah, so he says, Dagh Dagh Shannas, it will cover all the people. Uh, the hadith which the brother was mentioning about the ten major signs includes the smoke in there. So, yes, look, these are minor signs. Minor signs like these are happening volcanic eruptions, imbalances in the climate, imbalances in the world, imbalances in the people's morals, uh, transformations in people's features, uh, men become women, women becoming men, relationships becoming upside down. These are all minor signs. Lots and lots of wars. Wars here, wars there. Muslims fighting Muslims. Uh, people killing others. They don't know who they killed. And the one who got killed doesn't know who killed him. Uh, mass. Allah Sallallahu Alaihi called it mass murders. Mass. Like in, in one go, <coughs> hundreds of people die in one go. Allahu Alam. Nuclear weapons and things like that. So these are all minor signs that are occurring at the moment. The major signs are very, very specific. And they happen... Uh, across the world, everybody recognizes them. It fills the world. Yeah. Uh, sister at the back. Um, yeah, you know the way in this world Muslims are mentioned as by Sharia Allah? Hold on, Hamas talking too much. I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, in Jannah, like, Can you repeat it, please, sister, from the beginning? In this world, like Muslims are meant to live by Sharia Allah and it's seen as like, the best way to live. Yet in Jannah, there is no Sharia Allah. Like, why is that if you're preached to live? Why that law your whole life? Yeah, like in Jannah, you're not. Well, Allah, sister, I don't mean to be rude, but I swear I didn't understand anything. You know why? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Well, I, I think it's the accent. Are you speaking Irish? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean in a bad way, no, no. Yeah, yeah. 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 To me, to me, <laughs> you're probably speaking Irish and that's why I can't understand. <laughs> 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 I don't speak Irish. Why is there no Sharia law in general? Sorry, if they don't be upset with me. I'm entering a very, very good um, pleasant language. Why is there no Sharia law in general? Are you asking why is there no Sharia in general? It's the best way to do Yeah, if we're meant to live by Sharia law in this world, like why not in general? Ah, okay, okay. So if we're meant to live by Sharia and it's a good life for us here, why not live by it in Jannah? Very good question. Uh, first of all, the Sharia is placed on earth because Allah created us with deficiencies on earth. He created us with deficiencies on earth. And he, when He created us, He created us with desires, temptations, lusts, and this thing called the nafs. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. That's the first reason. Second reason, Allah did not create us on earth as a reward or a punishment. He created us on earth as a trial and a test. And this is why He placed desires within us. Because it's a trial and a test, and because we have desires and temptations within us, we have deficiencies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us guidance. And this is the Sharia. To tell us how you can be successful in this test, and how you can beat your desires and not, not let them get the best of you. Since we are deficient in this world and we have these desires, Allah needs to protect us from these deficiencies. You see, Allah is merciful. He doesn't just put you here on earth with Sharia just to make life hard on you. He put it on it because it has to be here. Because it's a test, Allah put deficiencies. But because Allah is merciful, He has to protect us from the harm. But look at the difference. The difference is, He only showed us which way to go. It's up to you to obey it or not. And that's all part of the test. It's all part of the trial. In Jannah, it's the reward. If you were able to beat your desires and with your deficiencies still maintain obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger and fulfilling the Sharia in your life, then the reward is in Jannah. In Jannah, there are no more deficiencies. In Jannah, your evil temptations and evil desires no longer exist. 
Allah says, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مِنْ غِلْ Allah on the day of judgment in, in heaven, in Jannah, will take out all the negative elements that once existed inside of you in the former, earth, in the former world, here. So, in Jannah, you don't need any more guidance, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates you in the perfect form. You can only be honest. You can no longer be jealous. You can only be good. And when I say good, as you still, you still got temptations, but the temptations are only used in good. You know, lusts in, in Jannah are only used in good. So you don't get jealous of someone else. You don't wish for what other people have. You don't need the guidance because you're no longer deficient in that way. And there's no more test. It's only the reward. You see? Or is that not... Is that clear? You sure? Okay. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair for your question. That's a very, very good question, Wallahi. And, you know, with non-Muslims, when you tell them this comparison between why the Sharia is here and why we don't need it in Jannah, the first response I used to get is like, oh, so, so you, you guys don't need to pray or do all that stuff in Jannah anymore? Say no. Why would we have to? It's the reward. And then it, it makes them sort of understand that, hold on, now I understand why we have suffering on earth. Now I understand why we go through hardships on earth. They think that this earth is meant to be paradise. And then, when they don't understand that, they say God is cruel. And that's why they become atheists. And they don't believe in God. Because they look at the world and they say, suffering, hardship. Say, what kind of a God is this? When they don't understand that we're actually being created as a trial and a test. And that Jannah is the ultimate reward. And there you will find no more suffering, none of that stuff. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Yes, sir. Um, I just want to point out, point out. Um, in Ireland, of course, there's some Muslim women who wear hijab. Um, I just want to ask um, some proof of the application of uh, wearing hijab in the Quran in the sense of hadith. And um, you're talking about the hereafter and the day of judgment, like the punishment and the consequences of not wearing um, hijab of the present application. Okay. So, what are you, what are you clapping? <laughs> I don't know, you guys, some of you, I don't know, some Off topic. No? It's, it's off the topic, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. He can ask that question. Look, how about we leave that question to tomorrow, inshallah, so long. His brother's asking about um, hijab, uh, maybe to prove to other people, what is the proof of hijab in the Qur'an? Is that right? Is that what you were asking? What's the proof of hijab in the Qur'an? And you said something about Jannah? What is it? The consequences of not wearing hijab. Okay. Now let me just, before I answer it tomorrow, inshallah, Everyone, hijab does not only apply to women, yeah? You all know that. Yeah. When you say hijab, Obviously. it's not just that piece of scarf that you wear on. <laughs> 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 it's and by the way, you know that hijab applies to the man first? The, the hijab actually applies to the man before the women? You know that? <laughs> yeah, in the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكُلِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ Tell the mu'minin, masculine, masculine term, mu'minin, believing men, to guard part of their gaze. That's hijab. Hijab means to cover, to guard, to protect, to secure. Yeah? And then tell the women also to guard part of their gaze. So hijab is a little bit more vast than just this piece of cloth on the head. Yes, yeah? so inshallah tomorrow we'll, we'll deal with that. Right. I think everyone's getting hungry. Yeah, tired. Yeah. The food's been delayed. Yeah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. In Jannah, it's never going to get We'll exercise our patience, inshallah. Where is it? No one else? I've heard you say in your lectures before. Do you know the screaming? Guys, please, just. There's still questions answered, still continuing, yeah? Can you just.